Good evening. The violence in Syria looks increasingly like the early stages of a civil war. Tonight we report undercover from inside the most troubled city of all. Some days the Syrian army shoots on sight on the streets of Homs, yet the civilians still come out night after night to demonstrate. These protests are taking place every night in Homs now with apparently unabated enthusiasm, which is impressive, not least because they've been going on for seven months now and so little has been achieved. And this, a makeshift A&E ward in someone's home, is where the casualties come. It's too dangerous to go to hospital. A man would go into the hospital with a treatable injury to his hand and his family would be summoned to collect a corpse with a shot in the head. Also tonight, he did break the ministerial code, but what really happened when the defense secretary and his close friend met the president of Sri Lanka? We asked the former cabinet secretary who unearthed SOFA government why politicians shouldn't have their own advisers to balance the hand of the British bureaucracy. And one day, perhaps, electricity pylons will look like this. All this... God only knows what we'll be paying for the stuff by then. The government's advice? Sort it out for yourself. Syrian government troops killed at least 20 people in the city of Homs today. At least we're told by local activists they killed at least 20 persons. There is no way of checking because the regime there won't let in independent witnesses. President Assad's mouthpieces claim that the only violence in the country is coming from so-called terrorists. But the unrest seems especially acute in the city of Homs. So our reporter Sue Lloyd Roberts smuggled herself into the country in defiance of the ban to find out firsthand what's happening. Now, um, as you're not supposed to be in the country, how do you get in? Well, I don't want to give away too many secrets, but I was lucky enough to link up with a very intelligent and brave group of activists who, by using a number of cars, various disguises, traveling a lot at night, um, a lot of tall stories at army checkpoints, managed to smuggle me into the city of Homs. It was a very impressive operation. And um, if these activists were able to win the Syrian revolution by virtue of their cunning and intelligence alone, they deserved to. But as you know, all the protesters are determined they're going to keep their, their demonstrations peaceful. And it's so far mostly only the Syrian army that have the weapons. Um, I've been talking to members of my network in, in Homs tonight, and the situation appears to be really dire. They're talking about more than 20 fatalities, although that has yet to be confirmed, and the use for the first time of helicopter gunships. Um, so things are deteriorating, but this is what I found. Homs, the so-called capital of the Syrian revolution, where, despite the daily death toll, the protest continues. But the tactics have changed. Most demonstrations are being held at night in an effort to minimize casualties. And as the only journalist here to view the protest firsthand, I noted another significant difference. Back in March, when they began, the protesters called for reform. Then they called for the fall of the regime. Today, as the name of each atrocity and massacre carried out by Assad's army and his thugs is called out, the crowd respond by demanding the death of the president by hanging. These protests are taking place every night in Homs now with apparently unabated enthusiasm, which is impressive, not least because they've been going on for seven months now and so little has been achieved. But this, I'm reminded, is not the point. I haven't seen anything like this in my life. The old, the young, women, everyone calling for freedom in Syria. This revolution will win, inshallah. I'm told to run as shots are heard and soldiers are seen at the end of the street. 
we should hide because the, the, uh, when uh, the security forces attack, the first thing they are looking for is the camera. Homs was one of the first cities to join the Syrian uprising when thousands gathered in the main square to call for the lifting of the government's emergency laws and for genuine democracy. But the government was not in the mood for listening. Ahmed was a member of the military security whose job it is to shoot soldiers who refuse to fire on the protesters. He has since defected. It was a genocide. I was there. The protesters had started their sit-in and there was a call for extra troops. I saw soldiers who refused to fire on the crowds because we used to lead them. We were in the same tanks as them and they were shot. I don't know how many protesters were killed, but it was more than 300 because I was stepping over dead bodies. They threw the bodies into trucks and then used fire engines to hose down the square. It was like a river of blood. Yes, there was a massacre. The army has encircled and attacked Homs ever since. I was taken on a tour of Baba Ama, one of the most besieged parts of the city. So, look, look at this, look at this. Uh... My guide equipped me with a fake local ID to get us past checkpoints and told me to pretend to be his deaf, mute sister, which suited me fine. Most of the time the city is under attack. Mothers can't even go out to buy bread or milk for their children. People are hiding in their houses. They can't go out. Buses are used to transport the army. Even schools are attacked and they are using some of them as prisons for the protesters. They want our children to remain stupid and uneducated. Look at the rubbish in the streets. This is how they treat us. We have rats, but no water, electricity or communication here. There's an army patrol ahead. We have to go another way. He took me to meet Muhammad, one of the soldiers who was ordered to attack the people of Baba Ama. When it came to Baba Amir, we were ordered to kill everything that moved, everyone who was walking in the street. There were children. One of them called his friends who were playing in the street to come into his house for safety. As they were crossing the street, they killed the boy and another six children. He told me he had just defected from the army to join the opposition the day before. Our orders were to kill the Syrian people. It was never the plan to protect them from the armed gangs. Rather, we were being ordered to kill our own people, who at the end of the day are our own flesh and blood. With the city in virtual shutdown, there's nowhere to go. No wonder angry people spill out onto the streets at night. At another demonstration the next evening, they'd clearly been tipped off that the BBC was in town. The posters were all designed for an international audience and expressed fury at Russia and China's refusal to back a UN resolution against Syria and for continuing to supply arms to a murderous regime. 
Members of the Revolutionary Council of Homs may look as if they are taking an exaggerated approach to their anonymity, but it is understandable. Is Syria now close to civil war? The regime is trying to push us to be involved in, in civil war, but it will not succeed. We are aware enough of this risk. And in the demonstrations, you can see the Muslims and the Christians, the Sunni and the Alawi, marching together and shouting for freedom, freedom for all people, so that our real enemy is the regime itself. On Friday, the protest still takes place during the day, after midday prayers. The protesters attempt to block off roads, to delay the arrival of the security forces, and in a network of makeshift field hospitals, they're preparing for the inevitable casualties. Doctors have been arrested and tortured for helping gunshot victims. The normal thing would be to take the injured with gunshot wounds to the hospitals. To our astonishment, we found that when we did that, the injured were either arrested or killed. A man would go into the hospital with a treatable injury to his hand or to his leg, and his family would be summoned to collect a corpse with a shot in the head or in the chest. But these medical points are hopelessly inadequate. They have to move once a week to escape detection, and they're desperately short of the basics, blood bags, antibiotics, and even antiseptic wipes. Even in this place, at any time, we are in danger of being broken into by the security forces. About half of them suffer from head or neck wounds. And we just haven't got the means to treat them. No one brought hair with a head wound has survived. That day, the Friday protest, always the bloodiest, his worst fears were proven. Security forces shot at men as they tried to leave the mosque to join the demonstration. They risked bullets as they ran. Two men suffered severe head injuries and were rushed to the field hospital. We followed them there. Their injuries were too gruesome to broadcast, and the doctors could do nothing to save them. They were buried the next day. A day in which another 13 were killed in the city. Homs may boast the title of the capital of the revolution, but it has cost them dear. Of over 3,000 deaths in the Syrian uprising so far, and many believe it has been much more, nearly half have been from Homs. Thirty kilometers away across the border in Lebanon, sympathetic Lebanese have sheltered increasing numbers of the wounded and defected soldiers now in hiding. Tens of thousands of soldiers are now believed to have left the Syrian army. Those who can have grouped together to form what they call the Free Syrian Army. Amer fled when ordered to shoot on unarmed demonstrators. The Free Syrian Army are people like me. It's a virtual army, not a real army, as you may say. This uh, Free Syrian Army is, uh, c consists of a lot of groups. Uh, separated among all Syria places or Syria uh, cities, uh, trying to protect the protesters from being killed on the streets. Weapons have never been hard to find here in Lebanon, but this dealer showed me how the cupboard is now almost bare. He's importing weapons, he says, from all over the world. Where? China. 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 And the price of a Kalashnikov 
has doubled from $1,000 to over $2,000 over the last few weeks. Who's buying them? They are being bought by Sunni and Islamists and they are smuggled across the northern border to Syria, though many are confiscated. For sure, with the amount of weapons we are sending over there, there is going to be a civil war. When demonstrations erupted in the town of Rastan, just 15 kilometers from Homs, a group of army defectors, members of the Free Syrian Army, promised to defend the protesters. They held out against government forces for a week before the Syrian army quashed the rebellion. The rumor is that the survivors among the new army are regrouping and preparing to defend Homs, a possibility which the leaders here welcome. The demonstration part of the revolution will continue peacefully. But on the other hand, the operations of the Free Syrian Army may increase more and more to protect the people. So we have now two uh, lines going together simultaneously the peaceful demonstrations and the operations of the Syrian Free Army. And the, the, the basic duty of the army of any state is to protect the people. We will win, of course. We see the victory in the eyes of the kids, women, elders, and all the young men marching every day in the demonstration. We will succeed, we are sure of that. They're marching again in Homs tonight in a brave display of the triumph of hope over seven months experience. We'll carry on telling Bashar al-Assad to go, one protester tells me, even if he has to kill every one of us. Well, with us now is Danny Abdul Daim, who holds dual British and Syrian nationality and was shot in the city of Homs last month. You may have seen our interview with him when he escaped to this country. Fida Cardus certainly saw it and was incensed by it. She's Syrian, lives in this country and returns to Damascus every year. It looks from that report as if things are getting a lot worse in Homs, doesn't Actually, it? they are. They're getting really worse. They just want, they want to stop it and they'll, go, they'll stop it in any way. They're, they've got tanks, ar new army individuals in. Uh, they're shooting at, house, at houses now. They're arresting anyone under 60 years old, any man under 60 years old. They're raping girls, taking girls, raping them, uh, so we could stop doing what we're doing or they're being threatened about raping the girls in Homs. It looks as if your country's on the verge of civil war, doesn't it? It is. It is, absolutely it is. If the, the free army or the opposition or the armed rebels, they don't stop and, and resort to dialogue, this is where the, the country is heading. But you don't deny that most of the killing has been done by the army no, and the government no, forces? No, what about, if, if, if that's the case, what about uh, the Syrian Free Army? What about it? Who's killing, who's killing our security? Who's killing the army people? Indu individuals? I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, these are people who were, as you heard somebody testify there, they were members of the Syrian security forces ordered to shoot their own soldiers if they refused to shoot That's demonstrators. Claims. That's claims. It's everything to do with the opposition now. It's all claims to, to us. What we want is just we want the country to... to we don't want bloodbath. We don't want uh, uh, civil war. We don't want our children to get, get killed. We don't want you to get killed. We don't want that. We only want to just have a peaceful a transformation to, to uh, That's to all right. Well, I don't know. Could I answer, please, the question? First of all, we've never had any sectarian problems in Syria in oh, all oh, our history. I beg to differ. No, no, I beg to no, no, differ, no, no. Sorry. No, no, let me just finish what I'm trying to say, okay. please. We've, got, we've never had any sectarian problems, and if there is, if the, the government is trying to do it. It's going into Why all... Why would it it's, do it's, it's, let me, Okay, it was went into all the Christian places, it wrote on their churches, we will get you next, and it told all the Christians that we did that. 
We don't, we've never had, my friends are all Christians, my friends are all Alois, we've never same, had any problem. You're, you're a Christian as well, okay. aren't you? Yes, I am yeah. Christian. Secondly, we, we, what reforms? What, this killed all these people, what kind of reforms can this, this government do? You've heard what, what they're saying but, on TV. Our, but you, this started out as a campaign for reform, part of the Arab Spring. Okay, can I it's just explain it? It's now gone way beyond that, hasn't it? Could you I wouldn't explain accept what Assad happened? doing any reform, Yeah, of you? course. Can I explain what happened? We went out. I was actually one of the people who went out. We were so scared to say, we don't want this regime. So we went out for Dara, that's in Homs. We went out for Dara and we said, we don't want the mayor. When the first bullet came out, when they shot the first man, we just asked for the regime to leave. No one was scared anymore. We thought, well, we're not going to live like this. We're not, we're not going to be treated like animals all our lives. Go to any any security place to try and get anything, see how you get treated in there. It's been like this if, for 40 if years. If you can get to that security place, if you can get, and I'm talking about Homs, yeah. can you get and walk freely in Homs? No, you of can't walk it, freely. I wonder why. What, I why? wonder why. Because yes. all the army and, and... All the army, Danny? Yeah, yeah the I'm army. Sorry. No, 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 no don't sorry. be sorry. I've been there, I've seen it in my eyes, and they've shot me. They shot three kids in front of me, like two months ago. Uh, it's by the uh, army, and they have civilians with machine guns standing with them. What does that mean? Right, what about the army? What about the, uh, the arms? The defected in, in army. The, what about the arms that have been smuggled to, uh, to homes? They, are, might, they, might, they might be smuggled. Individuals, all these arms. Well, I'll tell you something. If I was in their place, which I know they're not doing that right now, anyone wants to start protecting themselves. They want to protect their no, daughters. No, they're not. I'm sorry. What about the security forces? What's wrong you're with kill, security you're forces? Kill, you're killing no, no, security no, 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 no. forces. No, no, no. First, Please, of, all, I'm sorry, first of all, the army... The army is being killed by the security for all oh, The army, you, you heard this, the army that's not shooting. No, no, don't tell me, please, because I'm sure of this 100%. What, what is it you fear may be the consequence of what's happening? This is it. We're going to go into civil war. Simple as that. Simple as that. I'm 100% behind that. Uh, I know we're going to go. If, if you tell me or anyone okay. else tell okay. me that we're not going to go uh, to civil war, Highly mistaken. Okay, and whose fault is that? Us, because you... Because you, you wanted freedom. Come on. You've been that, living... Okay, your freedom. Can I'm I ask sorry, you something? Danny, I'm Have sorry. You've been, no, no, let no, me I'm say sorry. this. You've been living I'm in sorry. Syria. Can I have, you know that I can can't I have, say the president's me. name in the street excuse me. freely. Excuse me. Is that can freedom? I have my word there? Have your word. Thank you. I've been to Syria this summer, right? I've been in a cab, okay? I'm Christian. Right. I've been in a cab. On the way back, when I got to my, my destination, I get the, the cab driver, he turned to me, right? And he said, once we get to power, you're not going to get to wear what you're wearing now. Do you know, I've heard is that, that like 10 times that, now. I don't care. No, I've heard that but about 10 times now. Exactly. So what kind of freedom am I? It's a legitimate I'm, fear, isn't it? Okay, can I just say something? You, don't know, no, this, no, no, you no. don't know how this is going to turn out. The, no, I don't. The Assad but regime sorry. is a secular the regime. Where's right. The can I try and explain something? Quickly. All the girls that are being kidnapped are by cabs. All the intelligence are driving the cabs. They're trying to make secretarian problems between us. In Damascus? My friend... No, the, the, the I'm sorry. No, I'm not saying Damascus. I haven't done well, what I'm in Damascus. In Damascus, they're like... Ants there. There's so many oh, security I'm forces sorry. there. No, don't be sorry. I'm no, saying the no, truth. No, That's no, what's no, going no. on. I'm sorry. But it is unarguable. You don't know how this is going to turn out. Of you? course, no. Because we no. need yeah, we so need outside help. We need people that to help us. That means you prefer a dictatorship. No, I don't mean. I I want reforms, Jeremy. I don't okay. want dictatorship. Reforms I don't. Over all these all right. bodies? What okay. about what about the ones you uh, the opposition uh, have claimed? Let's leave it there. All right. Thank you all very much, both Thank of you. you. Thanks. Danny, please. Thank you.